Welcome to the Monk 1 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we will cover all of your skills as you train to be the same job for 8 years straight better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This guide is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV, or the MMO genre in general. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. 50 for A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heavensward, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Let's begin. Level 1, Bootshine. A basic 200 potency hit and an additional effect of changing your form to Raptor form for 15 seconds. Spam this until you level up a bit, as the additional effect does nothing until level 4. But there's something extra Pugilist starts with that the other melee classes and jobs do not have. Level 1, Greased Lightning. This is a trait or passive ability. Monk itself is a speedy job, and this is due to Greased Lightning. We start out with a 5% boost to both our auto attack and global cooldown speed. This doesn't seem like much at first, but it's much more significant than you might expect, and it's going to add up as we move on. Rather than starting with a base GCD of 2.5, we have a 2.37 GCD. Level 4 True Strike. An attack with 270 potency or 300 potency when done from the enemy's rear. This is our first example of a positional skill, or skills that have additional effects when striking an enemy from a specific position. The rear of the enemy is displayed via the red area in the diagram shown now. Always aim to hit your positionals and I will be assuming all skills will be hitting their positionals when I compare skills later on. Do know, however, that you are very unlikely to be hitting positionals when fighting alone, or even with a party, you are not guaranteed to be always hitting your positionals. This attack can be used only when in Raptor form, which as we saw earlier, is granted by Bootshine. Form activated skills will be displayed with a glowing border like so. Kind of like combos for other jobs, but more free form as we will see later. So we'll want to use Bootshine and then True Strike. And much like Bootshine, True Strike changes your form to Curl, but it doesn't do anything for us yet. But it will when we reach level 6, Snap Punch. An attack with a potency of 270 and 300 potency from a target's flank. The flanks are shown here in this picture. Once again, only usable in a specific form, Curl Form, granted from True Strike. The additional effect of Snap Punch is immediately useful to us though. Like the previous skills, this ends up changing our form, but this time to Opo Opo which affects Boot Shine, giving it a rear positional. If you hit the enemy from the rear while in Opo Opo form, you are guaranteed a critical hit off of Boot Shine. A critical hit is a good multiplier, but let's put it at a base 1.4 times multiplier 
for math's sake. This essentially makes Bootshine a 280 potency repositional. If you're lucky or have high critical hit rate, you don't lose anything on the positional because you'll get a critical hit anyway despite hitting the enemy from another direction. But pretend you can't get a critical hit without hitting the rear of the enemy. It's good to practice earlier rather than later. Once again, aim to hit your positionals, all of them. This is important because all of our main GCD skills are positionals. There will not be a single one that you will be commonly using that does not come with a positional. So now we have a full basic rotation of skills. Boot Shine, True Strike, Snap Punch, and then repeat over and over. It's a very basic 1, 2, 3, but it will allow us to start practicing the idea of moving across forms and dancing around the enemy for positionals. If you do any content with a tank to hold enemies in place, practice your positionals now. If you're alone, well, you don't have much choice. On a further note, misses will cause your form not to advance. Try not to fight enemies too far above your level, or be ready to need to use the same skill multiple times in a row to properly continue the combo. At level 8, we get our first roll action, Second Wind. We also gain Leg Sweep at level 10, and Bloodbath at level 12. Make room for these as they are useful skills, especially the healing ones. I will not be going deep into roll actions during this video, but I shall be making note of them. If you'd like a more in-depth description of each, check the melee roll actions video in the description. I do recommend it because there are some good skills in there. Level 15, Fists of Earth. This skill is not automatically obtained at level 15. That is because it is a quest skill. Not only do class quests give gear, they sometimes give entire skills. If a skill is not automatically unlocked when you hit the level for it, go check your quests. You should be doing these quests anyway, and from now on I will only be noting on screen when a skill is quest based. This is the first of your stances for Monk. Using Fists of Earth applies it to you with no time limit. It reduces all incoming damage by 10%. Just turn it on and keep it on. No reason not to have it on at this point. Level 18, Twin Snakes. An attack that does 230 potency and 260 potency from a target's flank, and it is only usable in Raptor form and gives curl form much like true strike. It's also weaker than true strike but comes with a 15 second buff, 10% increased damage to all of your attacks. Anytime we don't have this buff up, we want to use twin snakes instead of true strike, which will be roughly every other combo. Keep it running always. This is going to be a huge increase to your damage. Level 20, Enhanced Greased Lightning. This is an upgrade to Greased Lightning. Instead of a 5% boost to our GCD and auto attack, it is now 10%. At this point, your base global cooldown should be a 2.25 with zero boost from additional skill speed. At level 22, we get our next roll action, Faint. Level 26, Arm of the Destroyer. This is our first AoE, and it has a 5 yarm radius around your character and does 110 potency to all enemies hit. In Opo Opo form, this is boosted to 140 potency. This also changes your form to Raptor, just like Bootshine. Our entry into using AoE is three or more enemies. As such, 
Anytime you are fighting three or more enemies at once, replace Bootshine in your rotation with Arm of the Destroyer. You may even seek to just spam Arm of the Destroyer if the tank pulled a large group of enemies. If there are, say, six enemies, that's a 660 potency attack, and at best will only reapply Twin Snakes before going back to just spamming Arm of the Destroyer. Level 30, Demolish. This is our single most powerful skill as Monk, at least in terms of single target attacks. 80 potency or 110 potency from the rear, and an 80 potency damage over time effect or DOT for 18 seconds. DOT ticks are on the server tick or every 3 seconds. Because of this we can divide the time of the DOT by 3 to get 6 ticks of 80 potency for a total of 480 potency from the DOT. So in total this should be doing 590 potency to any enemies this is applied to. On any singular enemy, this will need to be reapplied every three full combos. This skill is also only usable in the curl form, granting Opo Opo form. As such, use this over snap punch at every opportunity, especially if there are multiple enemies. Apply this to every enemy where you can since it's such a huge boost. Just be sure the enemy will live long enough for the entire duration of the dot, or it won't be worth it. So now seems like a good time to go into our first basic opener, which for Monk is more like our full rotation. We're really only missing one skill for the rotation that we'll be using all the way up until level 80, so now is a really good time. Bootshine. Twin Snakes, Demolish, Bootshine, True Strike, Snap Punch, Bootshine, Twin Snakes, Snap Punch, Bootshine, True Strike, Demolish, Bootshine, Twin Snakes, Snap Punch, and so on. As I mentioned, we try to use Twin Snakes every other combo, and demolish every three combos, as noted by the colored backgrounds behind these skills. Follow the pattern, and eventually it will lead back to start. You also may have noticed by now, Monk moves around enemies a lot to hit their positionals. You're not able to do positional solo, but with a tank to hold enemies still, you're dancing around enemies all the time. Get practice on this now, since it only is going to get faster and more hectic. Things are going to be a lot busier as you level up. At level 30, you will be able to undertake your first job quest to obtain a soul stone, as well as your first job action. You must also complete all class quests from your guild. The other requirement is the level 20 main scenario quest, Self Management. This takes place soon after joining a grand company. This won't be an issue on any normal servers, but any server with preferred status or the road to 70 buff will likely lead new players to be 30 long before this story threshold is met. Level 30, Rock Breaker. This is our third curl form skill, and our second AoE. 150 potency to all enemies within a 5 yom radius, and granting Opo Opo form like the other skills. This is weaker than Demolish on up to 4 enemies, being barely stronger at 600 potency versus 590 from Demolish. The benefit is that this is all instant damage, where Demolish needs at least 18 seconds for the full damage, so if an enemy will die fast, this is better than Demolish. If the enemy is going to die slow, you may consider putting up Demolish on them. And if all of the enemies are dying fast, you may even want to just AoE on three enemies still, despite Demolish being so much stronger. 
At level 32, we get the roll action, Arm's Length. Level 34, Fists of Wind. There is very little use to this. It increases your movement speed by, I believe, 5%. You cannot stack it with Fists of Earth. In the overworld, you probably will be riding your mount around, negating this boost. And due to being solo, you would prefer increased defense. In dungeons, unless you die and have to resurrect at the start of the dungeon, you'll be running at pace with the rest of your party. And if you fall a little behind, you have sprint. Plus again, increased defense is better. You might stand in an AoE you should have avoided, or bosses will do unavoidable raid-wide damage. Level 35, Shoulder Tackle. On a cooldown of 30 seconds, this is our real first off-global ability. This is a gap closer of 100 potency. You can use this from a really far distance. Even more reason Fists of Wind is so bad. If you fall behind the party and there's enemies to attack, you can catch up from very far away in a single button. 100 potency isn't exactly a lot, but it's still free damage. Use this off cooldown, weaved between attacks. If you know you will have to disengage from a boss and want to rush back in though, feel free to save it for the gap closing effect. It's one of the best gap closes in the game. Level 40, Fists of Fire. Now we have our important stance. Increases damage dealt by 5%. Turn it on and never turn it off. Swapping to Earth for defense in the overworld is still effective, but now less so since killing an enemy faster effectively increases your defense too since a dead enemy can't hurt you. In party content, you have almost no reason to use anything but Fists of Fire. Once again, keep this on forever. Level 40, Enhanced Greased Lightning 2. Our Greased Lightning speed boost has been upgraded to 15% now. Our base GCD should be 2.12 seconds and will be this fast for a very, very long time. If you haven't been getting used to the gradually faster speed as you leveled, now is the time to do so. This will be our base speed until Shadowbringer skills, so we have a lot of time to get comfy with the flow of the job now. Level 42, Mantra. On a 90 second cooldown, Mantra increases how much healing spells recover to everyone within 15 yams of you by 10% for 15 seconds. Now, this doesn't seem like it's all that useful in dungeons, but it can be. 10% healing increases can be really useful to healers, especially if the tank is pulling a lot of enemies. Later dungeons also have some very heavy hitting bosses, sometimes doing raid-wide attacks that deal over half or even three-fourths of the entire team's health bars. In 8-man trials and raids, the use of this skill is even more useful, since those are more tuned for these kinds of skills. Higher damage from bosses and more mechanics that need heals too. Utility is utility, so be sure to help the team out with it. Help the healers heal everyone effectively by boosting their heals. Level 45, Four Point Fury. With this, we have an entire set of AoE skills, only usable in Raptor form. Four Point Fury does 140 potency to all nearby enemies within 5 yams. Like all Raptor skills, it changes your form to curl, and the big thing about this skill is that it extends the Twin Snake's duration by 10 seconds up to the maximum of 15 seconds, meaning that Twin Snakes is available for AoE rotations almost all the time, provided you put up the buff to begin with. On our first attacks of an AoE pool, we will want to put up Twin Snakes, 
then replace all future raptor form attacks with 4 point fury. Later on when tanks start to regularly pull multiple groups of enemies at once, while running with the tank, you can do single target rotation enough to put up twin snakes, then swap over to our AoE skills when the tank stops running away. Once again, AoE will ideally want to start with 3 enemies, 4 or more is when Demolish is overcome. Make heavy use of your AoE rotation on trash pools, especially once tanks start pulling multiple enemy groups at once. Just be careful since you must stand in the middle of all of the enemies to use your AoE properly, since it is a circle around you. It's high risk, but very high reward. At level 50, we'll get a final roll action, True North. Because Monk is all about positionals, you will love this skill. Feel free to even put this into your openers, in addition to movement heavy parts of fights. Level 50, Dragon Kick. Our final Opo Opo form skill does 230 potency or 260 potency from the flank. The entire use of this skill is to alternate it with Boot Shine for the Opo Opo form bonus of granting Leaden Fist for 30 seconds. What does Leaden Fist do? It's a new ability for Boot Shine. Under Leaden Fist, Boot Shine has now increased to an entire 370 potency and spends the Leaden Fist buff. And because the assumed critical multiplier is a 1.4 times multiplier, it's 518 potency for hitting that positional. So we really want to alternate Dragon Kick and Boot Shine like we alternate Twin Snakes and True Strike. This is going to increase our damage by a lot. Level 50, Perfect Balance. This is our final pugilist skill and it's a doozy. On a 90 second cooldown, this grants us 6 stacks of perfect balance that we have 15 seconds to use. Perfect balance stacks completely negate all form requirements of skills, so boot shine now and always will crit from a rear positional, and our raptor and curl form skills are available no matter what. When we spend the last stack, we'll be back to the start with no forms active at all, no matter which attack we used. We will need to do a formless dragon kick or boot shine to continue. As for how we will use this skill, there's essentially only one way to use it for single target, alternating dragon kick and boot shine. These are our highest potency skills that we can spam. Sure we have demolish too, but if there's multiple enemies, you're probably using AoE instead and putting Demolish over and over on a single enemy does nothing for you. No, instead we alternate our Opo Opo form attacks to constantly apply Leaden Fist and then use that Leaden Fist for the Boot Shine bonus. After doing three of each, as mentioned, we'll have no form and have to go back to the start of our rotation. But functionally, we already were there since we're spamming the Opo form skills, so the flow of our rotation remains uninterrupted. As for AoE, Rockbreaker is just barely stronger than the other two AoE skills, and as such we could use Perfect Balance for a slight boost in AoE situations by using Rockbreaker seven times in a row. Once before activating Perfect Balance, and then the six stacks of perfect balance. If you're about to reach a boss though, more likely not really to be worth it for such a tiny gain. And with this, we have our full main set of skills. As we discussed, the ratio for our combos is 2 to 3. We alternate our Opa Opa form skills and alternate our Raptor form, and demolish is every three combos. There are three skills in each form, two single target, and one AoE skill. Here's the breakdown of each form and how they loop around into each other in the flow of Monk. Rather than different combos like all the other melee, we have one extremely long combo that goes on until the end of an encounter 
or we drop the combo due to downtime. But now is the time to go over our first proper opener and explain the reasonings behind it. This isn't optimal and will include a few concessions to build up muscle memory for later openers and you'll see why as we progress. Pre-pull, Fists of Fire should be on guaranteed. Then do the following. Shoulder Tackle, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, Boot Shine, Perfect Balance, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, and then continue through our normal rotation. To start, unless you really need that defense, just stay in Fists of Fire. As for the actual start of the opener, Shoulder Tackle allows us to get in range of the enemy the immediate first moment the boss is pulled. Plus, this is already one of the first things we're practicing early for later openers. It's not being buffed by anything, but 100 potency isn't a huge loss to be unbuffed. We start with Dragon Kick because it's stronger than Boot Shine by itself and immediately move into applying Twin Snakes and Demolish for maximum power. Back in Opal Opal form, we use Boot Shine to get the critical hit rear positional before going into Perfect Balance. If we used Perfect Balance after Demolish, we would lose this extra power. Then Perfect Balance itself goes into, as you can expect, alternating Dragon Kick and Boot Shine. When we finish Perfect Balance, our timers will be getting low or outright running out, so we move on into the same pattern as we started with. Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish. Then from here, the opener is over, and it's all following the basic rules of the Monk rotation with the 2-2-3 ratio. Keep that ratio going, use Perfect Balance and Shoulder Tackle off cooldown, and be sure to hit all positionals you can. Don't die for them, but do go out of your way to hit them. It's a huge portion of your damage. Just keep hitting your globals the moment you can, and keep that GCD rolling. One thing I want to make note of before moving on is Dragon Kick and Twin Snakes almost always get used together now. This makes the 2-2-3 ratio more like a 2-3 ratio, since our GCD pattern combines Opo Opo and Raptor forms. But with all of the Realm Reborn skills out of the way, progress towards Heaven's Word, where you'll be able to finally obtain more skills for punching. Level 52, Form Shift. This is a key skill for openers, between pulls, and mid-fight downtime. It is on the global cooldown, so we will never use this instead of an attack. But what it does is give us Formless Fist, which has the same effect as Perfect Balance. It's only one stack though, so we're able to use it on any singular skill without needing to be in the required form. Unlike Perfect Balance though, we can continue the combo from wherever we started, where if we used Perfect Balance on Dragon Kick, we would not be granted Raptor Form. Doing the same with Formless Fist will grant us Raptor Form. In openers, this ensures we get the form bonuses for our first attack. Between battles, we will also want to put this up so we can continue into the next fight without skipping a beat. Perhaps while running between enemy groups, Twin Snakes will run out. You can Formless Fist, Twin Snakes, then move into AoE spam with Rock Breaker, provided there's enough enemies for AoE, of course. Level 54, Meditation and the Forbidden Chakra. A new UI element has appeared alongside these skills. This is your Chakra Gauge, displaying how many of your Chakra are open. Now, as for Meditation, this ability has a very short recast, 
but does apply to the global recast. Pressing this will open your chakra. Outside of battle, it will open all five chakra instantly. During battle, it will only open one chakra. When all five chakra are open, meditation will change into the forbidden chakra. The forbidden chakra is an off global that does 340 potency to a target, then immediately sets your chakra back to zero. Basically mid pull, we'll never be seeing this skill more than once. Between pulls we can hit meditation to get it back, but once we start a fight, we'll never touch meditation. It may be single target, but this can also help out in trash packs to die faster too. The only time we'll want to touch meditation mid pull is during long pauses in fights when no targets can be hit. This mostly means trials and raids, since bosses usually don't jump in dungeons. But when they do, hammer that meditation button until the boss comes back or otherwise another enemy appears for you to attack. Use Forbidden Chakra only after you have all of your buffs going, especially since you only get one use of it in a normal fight. But despite this, put the skill in an easy to reach position for later. Level 56, Elixir Field. On a 30 second recast, this is an AoE that does 250 potency to all enemies within 5 yarms of you. Put simply, this is a very good AoE skill. Use it on big groups of enemies where you can, but don't shy away from it on single targets either. The cooldown is very short, so it's meant to be used often. Once again, get your buffs up first, then pop it. Try and be in the middle of enemy packs to maximize the number of enemies hit, though you should already be trying to do that with your base AoE rotation. Level 60, Tornado Kick. On a 45 second cooldown, this does a 400 potency hit to the target. This is a decently sized hit and should be used in every context. This includes AoE, just like Forbidden Chakra. Whichever enemy has the most HP or is dying the slowest, for whatever reason, use Tornado Kick and Forbidden Chakra on that enemy and keep spamming your AoE moves. Put simply though, this is just an additional button for more damage and we want to keep it on cooldown. But we got several of those in this set of skills, along with Form Shift. Form Shift may be the most game changing, but we need to fit in all of our new off global attacks too. So let's get this next opener moving. Pre pull, Fist of Fire, Meditation, and Form Shift for Formless Fist. Then do the following Shoulder Tackle, Dragon Kick. Twin Snakes, Demolish, Forbidden Chakra, Boot Shine, Perfect Balance, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Elixir Field, Dragon Kick, Tornado Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, and then continue on to your normal rotation. So it's the same opener as before, but with all of our new skills added in. And due to using Form Shift before our opening Dragon Kick, we'll actually get Leaden Fist, so when we get to that Boot Shine right before Perfect Balance, it will be boosted to 370 potency and crit if we get the positional. This alone shows why Form Shift is so good. The second change is putting the Forbidden Chakra after our Demolish. There are three reasons for this timing. Because this is the earliest we can weave in an OGCD to be buffed by Twin Snakes, to wait for party buffs to come out, and for our latest skills to make using the Forbidden Chakra before using any other off-global cooldown attack very important. So building muscle memory even if it's not important yet. 
Then we head into our perfect balance phase as normal after the first boot shine. We start to single weave in our OGCD attacks. First is Elixir Field because of the shorter cooldown, then Tornado Kick. Both will take place during any and all party buffs, so it doesn't matter that the Tornado Kick gets used later. Do not do them earlier than the initial demolish, and keep the order to be the Forbidden Chakra, Perfect Balance, Elixir Field, and Tornado Kick. As said, any earlier and it may not get the Twin Snakes buff. From there we can just casually flow through our rotation as normal. Use stuff off cooldown, and keep the 2-2-3 ratio going. Things have become a bit more busy just due to having off-global attacks to use. Keep practicing, because things are going to become a lot busier in Stormblood. Level 62, Deep Meditation. This trait massively buffs meditation. There is now a massive 80% chance that a critical hit from any weapon skill will open one of your chakra. That is, on average, six critical hits to give you a free use of the Forbidden Chakra. This buff is huge, especially when you consider that ideally, Boot Shine is always a critical hit, and you're guaranteed three of them during perfect balance and hitting your positionals. That is disgustingly good. One thing to keep a note on is AoE. If you hit three enemies and get three critical hits, you will still only get one chakra. It's one chakra per weapon skill, not one chakra per critical hit. But you'll still want to use the forbidden chakra in AoE, especially as practice for later. In general, Keep an eye and ear out for when you hit 5 Chakra. You want to be spending these ASAP. Level 64, Riddle of Earth. Massively nerfed, but still ridiculously stupid in a good way. Riddle of Earth is our first skill with charges, or multiple uses at once. Upon using a charge, the cooldown will begin, and every 30 seconds, until back to a max of 3 charges, a new charge will be given. Riddle of Earth as a skill, meanwhile, lasts for a measly 6 seconds, which explains why it has multiple charges. But it does double duty. One possible use is reducing all incoming damage by 10% for the 6 second duration. If you are making a lot of mistakes, picking up vulnerability stacks by failing mechanics, this 10% can potentially save your life. The other use is that for the 6 second duration, all positional requirements are ignored. Yes, really. This is on top of still being able to use True North as needed. Monk is always and forever constantly doing positionals, but between True North and Riddle of Earth, 38 of every 90 seconds you can't ignore positionals with these skills. That's more than a third of all of your positionals. Whenever you are unable to do your positionals and can afford to weave in these skills, be sure to do so. You have so much freedom because of these. Level 66, Enhanced Tackle. This turns Shoulder Tackle into a skill with charges. Shoulder Tackle can now have two charges. It's not that great a trait, but at least we now have two gap closes on a very short cooldown, and rounds out the opener some more. Level 68, Riddle of Fire. This is a very simple but effective ability. On a 90 second recast, you get 20 seconds of 25% increased damage, which is a pretty hefty increase on top of Twin Snakes. Get Twin Snakes up, then pop into Riddle of Fire and get spamming all of your attacks. OGCDs are made much stronger thanks to this buff. Also be sure to use this for AoE too. 
you will melt packs of enemies for the duration of the buff. Keep this on cooldown no matter what. Level 70? Brotherhood. This one is even stronger than Riddle of Fire. On the same 90 second recast, this grants everyone within 15 yams, including yourself, Brotherhood and Meditative Brotherhood for 15 seconds. Brotherhood is a simple 5% damage boost, but being a party-wide damage boost, this is big. Meditative Brotherhood gives every single weapon skill or spell used by everyone affected by Meditative Brotherhood a 20% chance to open a chakra for you. This essentially means everyone is pouring their own energies into you and massively increasing your chakra gains as all eight of you, this includes yourself, have a chance to give you extra chakra. Just like Riddle of Fire, use it once you have all of your other abilities up and then prepare to need to use the Forbidden Chakra multiple times for the duration. Yes, you will gain chakra that fast. You really want to get this out any time it comes off cooldown. So our opener has had a few major power boosts added to it, but our overall rotation remains about the same. However, this is the final opener. None of our Shadowbringer skill will at all affect the opener, so expect to be practicing this opener all the way up to level cap. Pre-pull, Fist of Fire, Meditation, and Form Shift then do the following. Shoulder Tackle, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Riddle of Fire, Demolish, The Forbidden Chakra, Boot Shine, Perfect Balance, Dragon Kick, Brotherhood, Boot Shine, Elixir Field, Dragon Kick, Tornado Kick, Boot Shine, Shoulder Tackle, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, and then continue on to the rest of our rotation. So with a second stack of Shoulder Tackle, we can spend one just to gap close into the boss as the tank pulls while also starting the cooldown, but without spending the second stack, which is why we were practicing such so early. That and you've learned by this point how good this works for an opener. Moving on is our placements for our new buffs. Riddle of Fire will put immediately up before Demolish to buff that by a ton, as we're gonna start revving up into full speed. Brotherhood meanwhile gets a rather late start after the first Dragon Kick of Perfect Balance. But due to our speed, this is early enough not to be an issue for the party-wide buffing. And then from this point, things take the same course. Using our off-globals in singular weaves. But remember to keep this in mind. The Forbidden Chakra refreshes are very, very common. Three Chakra are all but guaranteed during Perfect Balance, on top of any other critical hits you may get or procs from buffing your allies. Our second shoulder tackle here, you may end up waiting just to push it back because of by this point we may already have the second forbidden chakra available. And given that is far stronger than a measly 100 potency shoulder tackle, it should take the priority slot. Otherwise we'll continue to do as we always did. 2 to 3 ratio, using everything as it comes off cooldown, and now most important, constantly using Forbidden Chakra as it fills, what with our massive chakra gains. A very major thing I want to make note of though, is notice the timings of all of our off global skills. They're all factors of 90 seconds. Perfect Balance, Riddle of Fire, and Brotherhood are all 90 seconds. Tornado Kick is 45, Shoulder Tackle Charges are 30 seconds, and so is Elixir Field. Because of this, 
we should have a full opener available every 90 seconds. Be prepared for the inevitable re-openers mid-fight. Hopefully by now though, you've gotten used to the speedy nature of Monk and the flow of how the job works. The dance of positionals as well, as things are about to get a lot faster. Level 72, Enhanced Fists of Fire. This is a simple way to boost your damage across the board. Instead of a 5% boost from Fists of Fire, we get double with a 10%. Level 74, Deep Meditation 2. So you know how I was warning you during the level 70 plus opener to be watching your chakra gains? Well now critical hits are a 100% guaranteed chakra gain. Our opener is a guaranteed 4 chakra after our first use of the forbidden chakra. One critical hit at any point means we're getting a second forbidden chakra use. Or one proc from Brotherhood. So now, more than ever, be ready to hit the button at any time. Between your own gains and Brotherhood, there's going to be a lot of Chakra going around. Level 74, Enlightenment. In addition to an overabundance of Chakra, this is a way to use it for AoE. This does 220 potency to all enemies hit in a line in front of you. This is a very big AoE too, going 10 yams in front of you. It has all the same requirements as the Forbidden Chakra, while being not much weaker. On as few as 2 enemies, this is better than the Forbidden Chakra. So unless you're fighting just a singular enemy, Use this every time it comes up. Side note, Meditation is still the button that turns into the Forbidden Chakra. Enlightenment is its own button and cannot be used outside of battle for Chakra gains. Level 76, Enhanced Greased Lightning 3. This is our final speed boost. With a 20% boost, our base global cooldown is now a 2.0 and our auto attacks are rapid fire. This is a big reason why we stick to single weaves where possible because even without unfortunate gear situations, we are very fast. I hope you got comfy with the 15% speed boost, but are ready to keep being speed 4. Level 78, Anatman. This has a 60 second cooldown, not that you'd want to use it all that often. And upon using Anatman, your auto attacks will be cancelled and you'll begin to channel your energy. If you make any movement while channeling this skill, it will end prematurely, but it can last for a maximum of 30 seconds. While channeling Anatman, your Twin Snakes and current form timers will be extended to their maximum durations and remain so until you leave Anatman. Because of keeping your Twin Snakes buff running, this is slightly better than just using Form Shift. The wear is a bit more specific though. This is a mid-fight skill for when the boss leaves the arena and you maintain control of your character and do not need to move. This is very specific. Some bosses will remove control from you. Others will keep the controls, but force you to move around and do mechanics or such. As long as there's enemies to hit though, this isn't something you're going to use. It's a very, very specific use case, but those cases are actually very worth keeping this around for. Level 80, Six-Sided Star. This skill does 540 potency, but has double the cooldown of all of our other weapon skills. In essence, we can translate this to only 270 potency during normal rotations with how it delays our next skill. But this is not where we want to use it. The additional effect of this is to increase your movement speed for 5 seconds. How much? I don't know, 5%? It's hard to tell without the side-by-side -side comparisons. There 
is one specific use case for this skill though. Greed. For example, here is a late game boss that does a giant AoE that forces you to the edge of the arena. In total, I am unable to hit the boss for around 4 seconds, let's say. Which means if I had used 6 sided star, I would have spent most of the cooldown out of range. Further, I was able to stay in range longer without being in danger due to the slightly boosted run speed. But that makes this an even harder skill to use than Anatmon. Greeting without still getting hit while also making sure to use Six Sided Star is a very, very, very specific use case. Often, the base global cooldown time, even for being a measly 2 seconds, is long enough to dodge out of an AoE and then get back in without missing a beat or wasting time on your global cooldown. Larger AoEs or worse timed AoEs may lead Six Sided Star into better standing, but in general, it's not something you will see much use of probably. I do highly recommend attempting to improve enough to make proper use of this, but even a master might struggle to find places it fits. Ultimately though, Monk is pretty simple. It's just really fast and has a heavy emphasis on positionals and gets a little hectic when we have all of our off globals up. Just keep following the flow and don't stop hitting the boss with your kicks and flips. Thank you for watching my Monk 1 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Ethan Olson, Jamie Cotterell, Kathy Nock, and Melfi. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching.